thank you, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mark Edwards for this kind invitation to give this talk today. And also, I would like to thank the Honor Frost Foundation for supporting this project. Um, today, I will talk to you about my latest project, uh, Trad AG, which is Egyptian traditional riverine tangible and intangible heritage rescue project. Um, but before diving into the details of the project, I will set the scene with a bit of background. Um, Herodotus once said, uh, Egypt is the guest of the night. And growing uh, up in Egypt, you would hear this sentence every day, everywhere. Um, The, so the Egyptian known and might have even invented sailing around 3,100 3, BC, uh, which is suggested by archaeological evidence from the pre-dynastic period of Naqada. Um, also, the ancient Egyptian had a very graphic language, thus the representations of sailing up the Nile is always represented with a sailing boat um, um, while sailing down the Nile is always rep represented with a boat without a sail, as you can see here and here. Um, so we can say that Egypt had around 6,000 years of riverine transportation, navigation history, and traditions, uh, from ancient small boats to majestic funerary barges, and from cargo boats to ledger cabin boats of the 20th century to now. And for the audience who, don't, who are not familiar with my research, uh, for the last 10 or 11 years, I've been trying to study traditional wooden sailboats on the Nile uh, with a focus on Egypt. And um, I've been doing this since uh, my master's in Alexandria. And then after finishing my master's, I um, applied for the PhD in the University of Southampton and continued working on the same topic during my PhD. Um, so in April 2017, um, I did the first um, survey, uh, which was a uh, using remote access uh, as you can see here in the map, this is Google Earth, uh, but also uh, going into the field, we're doing physical surveys uh, of the Nile Valley from Aswan all the way up to Cairo. And here you can see the different targets that have um, allocated uh, during the virtual survey or the remote survey in Southampton. And then I went on in the field in April 2017 um, uh, drove all the way from Aswan to, to Cairo and uh, surveyed these uh, targets and these points. So um, I started searching for uh, wooden boats on the Nile uh, back in 2017 with the help of my lovely partner who you can see here is um, being used as a scale next to a, a rudder of a, a Nile boat uh, that we found near Aswan. Um, according to the fieldwork results, there are no potential for studying contemporary wooden boats on the Nile. Uh, the tradition of building wooden hulls have already disappeared and was substituted with metal hulls. However, there is some interesting aspects and um, revolution in construction and navigation of the metal hull boats itself. Um, the modern metal hull sailing boats are imitating their wooden ancestors in terms of uh, shapes, um, rigging, colors, even the small oared fishing boats are um, an exact replicas of the old wooden boats. Um, uh, that was used to um, being seen on the Nile in the last 100 years or 200 years. 
And then um, one year ago, Professor Ahmed Ali from the university, from Alexandria University, invited me to give a public lecture uh, in the Bibliotheca Alexandrina. Uh, and this public lecture was recorded and uploaded online uh, later on on YouTube uh, through the Bibliotheca Alexandrina services. Um, and a few weeks later from that time, a guy contacted me on Facebook after watching the online lecture. And um, he told me that during my lecture, I said that there are no longer any wooden uh, working boats on the Nile. Um, and that he was, that was not true. And he know of a place where an old wooden boat still exists until uh, today. Uh, um, so we spent a few days chatting on Facebook until he sent me these photographs. And when I saw, uh, uh, these photographs, I was very impressed. This is one um, uh, one of the last uh, wooden boats on the Nile uh, in Egypt uh, that exist until today. Um, so the project idea came from all of this. Uh, so I had a long discussion with a Dr. Lucy Blue, uh, the director of the uh, the archaeological director of the Honor Frost Foundation. And we talked about the idea of the project and that I would need to go and record this dying tradition and this boat. Um, and thus I applied for the Honor Frost Foundation for funding with the um, aims, research aims of the project as the following. Um, to record the rapidly disappearing intangible river in heritage of Egypt, of course, um, and specifically recording the oldest remaining wooden boat on the Nile using 3D technologies. Um, also to train in the new generation of Egyptian maritime ethnographers uh, by giving seminars, workshops, uh, and lectures in Egypt. Um, and finally, to design and achieve a public engagement platform uh, using social media and a website, which will host all the data gathered by the project uh, that will allow an expansion in the future um, in the near future for a bigger project. And of course, um, the project cannot start without having a, a team member. So uh, we are six team members uh, from different backgrounds. Uh, four of us are maritime archaeologists. Um, and uh, uh, our gatekeeper, uh, Mr. Abdul Nasser Galal, uh, who was kindly enough to show us around in the field and make the first introduction uh, to the community uh, in Luxor. So actually, um, during the last week of October in 2019, I made the first contact with the local community in Luxor, uh, where I met Mr. Abdul Nasser for the first time. Uh, who is our gatekeeper, uh, who started the introduction or introduced me into the community um, um, in Luxor. And we had two targets uh, for the first fieldwork, um, to visit uh, Hajj Abdul Ati, who is one of the most famous boat builder in the region of Upper Egypt, and used to own the biggest boat yard in uh, uh, Isna, the city of Isna, here, uh, the first star. Um, um, and he is retired from that work, uh, but he now his uh, sons are a major distributors of wood in Upper Egypt. They no longer work um, with boats or they are no longer building boats, uh, but um, they are distributor of wood. Um, we spent a few hours at Hajj Abdul Ati's house and we discussed a lot about his past career uh, as a boat builder. And while I was showing him some of the old photographs of the Nile boats, he recognized himself in one of them, dated to 1977 by Fred Eicher. And this photograph was taken in his boat yard. He is the one inside the boat. He's this one. Here. Let me 
here is another photograph of the boat yard. Uh, luckily, I had my audio recorder on during the whole meeting, and I promised had Abdelati another proper visit um, where we are going to discuss more about Nile boats. Um, uh, but sadly, he passed away a few months ago, and we couldn't uh, meet again. Um, the next day, um, we went to a small village 25 kilometers south of Luxor uh, to see the boat in real life for the first time. And uh, as you can see, the boat has just been sitting there for about 40 years now, uh, or yeah, give or take five years. Um, it's been sitting there gathering silt uh, on the bank of the Nile. Uh, the owner of the boat is uh, Rais Abul Hassan, um, who is a fisherman in his late 80s. Uh, he lives in a very small village uh, of, uh, it's called Adaisat in Upper Egypt. Uh, about 25 kil kilometers south of uh, Luxor. Um, he lives in a small mud brick house overviewing the Nile and his plot of land uh, where he, he and his son are uh, uh, um, growing different crops, uh, cro uh, crops um, and he's no longer um, uh, fishing or using the boat. Um, so the, during the past few decades, the boat become embedded in uh, the accumulated silt of the Nile. Um, but actually, this is what preserved the boat. Um, originally, uh, Rais Ab uh, Abul Hassan had two boats, but sadly, one of them was uh, broken um, and lost. But this one uh, was preserved uh, um, until now and, and in egypt nothing is thrown away the rest of the movable parts of the boat were used around the house and in the farm so as you can see here this is the rudder blade and the rudder blade was used as a door to keep the farm animal animals within its wall um, uh, the rudder tiller and rigging ropes are used to fix the roof uh, the mast is the main support beam uh, of the house, as you can see here. And the anchor is just lying down beside the house. So we spend uh, the day talking about the boat, its history, and uh, everything around it, how Rais Abul Hassan used to uh, use it in, in the good old days. Uh, so Rais Abul Hassan inherited this boat from his father, and um, um, for more than 50 years, he has been using it for fishing activities on the Nile, uh, which have changed dramatically by the build of the high dam in the 1970s. Uh, the build of the high dam uh, changed the regulation of water and that's flowing into the Nile and also changed the, fi um, uh, the fishing activities on the Nile um, there. Um, So, as I didn't know how the locals would react back then, I came uh, prepared only with my camera and mobile phone, but thanks to modern technology again, I managed to get basic measurements of the boat, um, the bow, stern, and rudder. Um, so, overall width and length, uh, overall the boat is about eight meters in length, um, 2.8 meters in width, uh, about one meter and uh, 50 in uh, in depth, um, um, and it's all made of uh, uh, acacia nyolitica wood. So while I was in Luxor doing these interviews and meeting the locals. Uh, I had an email from Dr. Lucy Blue uh, that congratulating me that I got the funding from the Honor Force Foundation to carry on and do this uh, project. So I start, uh, we started organizing the second phase of the field work. Um, and by the end of this February, I returned to Egypt from Southampton uh, to train the new 
generation of Egyptian maritime archaeologists um, with a one full week extensive um, workshop uh, hosted by the Center for Maritime Archaeology in Alexandria University. Thanks to uh, Professor Ahmed Khalil for that. Um, so the, uh, the CMA UCH student uh, would learn about maritime ethnography, history of Egyptian boats, and the latest techniques in boat recording, and how to conduct the full ethnographic research. And um, uh, the students had really good time. Uh, we made a replica of a um, fishing vessel uh, from Lake Burulus. Um, we had a small scaled down uh, boat that the students were using it as a training uh, boat where they are recording um, the boat and conducting the full uh, ethnographic record of the boat. Currently, the team is working on uh, setting up a website uh, to form a platform to engage with the public. Um, and it will be this. It's uh, uh, trad slash agy.com. It's still under construction, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks, it will be online. So um, please follow me to for updates. and. At the same time, I'm using my own Twitter account and Facebook profile to engage with the public about it. And this is the power of social media now, uh, that you can reach people that you wouldn't, wouldn't normally reach. Um, so for the past 10 years, I have faced uh, the same problem over and over again, gaining access to the right people. Uh, but now with the advanced, advancement of technology, the majority of my boatmen have a group on Facebook where older generation are passing knowledge uh, to the younger generation. And I'm lucky to be part of the group trying to stimulate discussion about traditional, uh, traditional nice sailing boats. Um, and after the workshop in Alexandria, we started our trip to Upper Egypt, driving almost 1,000 kilometers in one day to start our second phase or second cheese work um, last March. Um, we were planning for uh, cleaning the boat, uh, conducting a full 3D scan of the boat and its parts, recall the knowledge of the Rais Abul Hassan and uh, uh, make a small documentary of, of uh, this recording or encounter. Um, and also engage with the local community to discuss the possibilities for future work and design a plan for saving the boat for future generation. And actually, um, the first part, cleaning the boat, um, we were planning for one day for cleaning the boat, but it turned out to be more challenging task. It took us uh, about three full days to clean it last half a day to prepare it with the uh, targets for photogrammetry and scanning. And here you can see um, a fast forward time lapse of uh, part of the cleaning process where we were cleaning the inside of the boat. The boat had been sitting there for about 40 years, so it gathered a lot of, a, a lot of silt. As you can see, uh, Cleaning, uh, we started seeing more details, uh, the frames, uh, the planks. We, uh, so this is why uh, we, it took us some time to clean all, of, all the silt from the boat. And also we cleaned the inside of the boat, uh, the bow and the stern, uh, to, to have a, a better idea of the construction of the boat. And here is the inside of the boat after being cleaned. All of that was silted up, and none of these details was visible before cleaning it. Yeah. 
So after cleaning the boat, uh, photogrammetry targets were attached to the boat. Um, and uh, we used two methods of recording. Uh, we used photogrammetry, uh, but also used uh, laser scanning for the, in, uh, the internals of the boat. We used the Faro Freestyle laser scanner. Um, so we were uh, trying different methods and comparing it um, and trying to do uh, uh, different ways of taking the photographs for the photogrammetry. Um, so we ended up uh, with a lot of data from this. Uh, the rudder was assembled back again, uh, scanned and photographed, as well as all the bullies, dead eyes, ropes, and nets uh, that belongs to the boat. And here you can see me, uh, you see um, using the NAS uh, scale card as my scale in the, all the photographs. And we did a uh, recording of the knowledge of Raisa Abul Hassan. Uh, uh, we, we filmed for about 10 days, uh, every day uh, for a few minutes, sometimes a few minutes, sometimes an hour or so. Uh, depends on the day. Um, Here you can see uh, one of the um, younger generation fishermen in the um, in the village talking with Rais Abul Hassan about the good old days of fishing and how the difference between generations, uh, different methodology, also different terminology that they were using uh, in the old times and uh, in the current times. Um, Rais Nagar is a he's uh, about 42 years old, so there is a 40 years uh, difference in the generation. So there is a whole a generation and a half difference between them. So we really had wonderful time as the days goes by. A bond was formed between our team and Rais Abul Hassan family, and because our team included both genders, um, uh, our life was much much easier. Uh, the people felt that we are all a family and they open up for more information, more discussion. Um, and here you can see uh, Mai talking with Rais Abul Hassan about um, his feeling towards this boat and how this boat, uh, what this boat represents to him in his memory. So now, what will happen to the boat? The boat is still there. Um, uh, the family is keeping it for a few generations now, and most probably it will remain in the same family for the next couple of generations at least. But now um, the boat is fully scanned. Um, our team is working on processing all the data that we have. Uh, we have some uh, about 1,000 images uh, or general images, and uh, we have about 3,000 images for photogrammetry of uh, the outside and inside of the boat. Um, roughly 400 minutes of video and audio recording, and about 50 gigabytes of uh, laser scanning data. We have a total of 234 gigabytes of data uh, overall. Uh, that we are working currently working on uh, that would take some time to process. Um, the outcome of the data uh, would be a full report published on the Honor Frost Foundation website. Uh, the project website also will include videos, uh, 3D models of the boat, uh, and also photographs and small stories about the people uh, in the village who have been using the boat. And hopefully by the end of the year, one or maybe two articles to be published about aspects of the project and its finding. Um, this project is a cornerstone for a future bigger and more extensive research project to record and safeguard the Egyptian traditional maritime uh, or maritime cultural heritage. 
in general and focusing on riverine uh, heritage. Ten years ago, I was the only Egyptian who was interested in traditional maritime heritage of Egypt. And now with the help and support of the Honor Frost Foundation and continuous support of Dr. Lucy Bu and Dr. Ahmed Khalil, we are building the capacity of uh, human power and resources that could be used in the future to document our traditional uh, maritime heritage before its extension. And this slide was added recently. So another future possibility, again, one of the amazing power of the social media, uh, a man contacted me uh, this time from Aswan. Um, he contacted me on Twitter uh, a couple of weeks ago, asking if he can help with recording and preserving the knowledge. Um, he comes from a family of boatmen who owned a number of uh, stone carriers boats, uh, the ones that you can see here in this photograph. Uh, and uh, some of them are still being employed on the Nile to move stone from the quarries uh, near Aswan. And he wrote something really touched me. He, uh, and he made me feel the, um, the importance of what I'm doing right now. He said, I want to commemorate my ancestors and their knowledge forever. And thank you very much for coming today. Next, we talk by Phil Short, talking about the exhibition of the 1495 Danish King ship. Please join us again next week at half past 12 with the, another COVID topic.